Well, good morning. Uh, the title of the sermon today is actually Lemon Lists, uh, and it, so it certainly features lemons. And uh, one of the things that I have learned is that uh, it takes lemons to make lemonade. You, you got to have them. And this has been a great summer for, for, for having lemonade. There's nothing better than a good cold glass of lemonade with lots of ice, and it's pretty refreshing, and what a great summer we've had weather-wise to enjoy that popular drink. But you have to have lemons first. Now, my lemon list that I'm referring to in this sermon is comprised of people who I am presently very irritated with. And it could be for any number of reasons, but in any event, when I think of these people, I get kind of a sour taste in my mouth. It's something that is disturbing and it's problematic. And, and right now, I, I think I may have two people on the lemon list. There, there's lots of times when I have nobody. Uh, nobody that I, I'm feeling that kind of feeling toward, but sometimes there's two, three, or four, and it's, it becomes kind of a call to action, a call to a living a life of forgiveness. And what I have come to realize is that as I pray for that person on my lemon list, and continue to pray and ask God for the help that I need to forgive someone who trespassed against me on some level or another, when that release does take place, it can be almost as sweet as a glass of lemonade. Now, Jesus recognizes that forgiveness is essential to the gospel to the shalom, to the peace that surpasses all understanding. If we live a life of forgiveness, we can be fueled in a special way that allows us to not only experience a new dimension of God's love, but also to share that shalom with each other and the world. And so when these situations and people, places, situations that take place, that are creating this disturbance, it's a call to action to begin to give birth to the other through the power of prayer. Now, years ago, when uh, I started, when I first became clean and sober, almost 32 years ago now, there was a film that was very popular, and I forget the actual name of the film, but it was a, a lecture by a doctor and uh, one of the things in AA uh, you're, you're taught is to never get too tired, too hungry, too lonely, and really too angry. And, and anyway, this physician, he explained that when a human being gets super angry and is holding on to that anger, there is a chemical that is so strong that if you took a drop of it and injected it into an elephant, it would kill the elephant instantaneously. I don't, I've told this story for years. I, I'm assuming it's true. I don't know what the, the chemical is, but in any event, I think we know that anger and, and, and living that life of anger and judgmentalism and just, just getting more and more uptight with, with people does not bear very good fruit. And, and Jesus understands that as well. It's not that we're not going to have problems, because we are. And so Peter today, as he did last week, uh, when Jesus explains, you know, how we uh, deal with sin, if someone sins against you, what do you do? You confront them. But now Peter's asking Jesus this week, well, how many, ti how many times do I have to forgive someone. Seven times? And Jesus says, no, 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 not seven times. Seventy times seven or seventy-seven. A whole lot of times. Peter, Jesus understood that that's not going to be easy to forgive someone. 
It's something that is going to take time and energy. And it's possible. It's happened to me many times. I'm sure it's happened to you as well. Yet maybe you've prayed for someone who has, you felt has harmed you in some sort of way. And maybe you've even experienced that release and you had a nice glass of lemonade. And then a week later, the person comes back on the list. It happens. Jesus understands that. And he recognizes that we must be relentless in our efforts to forgive those around us. And that's not to suggest that if something that has happened is super egregious, that we have to distance ourselves from someone, that that needs to happen as well. But we know how important forgiveness is. I don't like to refer to another gospel when I'm preaching in one, and of course today it's Matthew, I rarely will do it, but I, I do want to refer to uh, a statement that Jesus makes in the Gospel of Luke when he says to his disciples, I did not come here to bring peace, but rather division. Now, to stir things up. And, and of course, what we understand here, and, and particularly when this gospel was written to the audience, it was written to 40 years or so after the death and resurrection of Jesus, is that people are trying to understand what this new faith is. The family unit, the family unit that Jesus is talking about when he says father will be against son, daughter against mother, that political unit is being disturbed as various members of the family are now responding to the Torah in a whole new way through the gospel of Jesus. And this creates struggle. What does it mean? How does it work? And Jesus understands that this is going to happen. And this is where, rather than just fight it out, we still have to find a way to peace, to understand the other, to listen, to learn, to grow. Years ago, back to AA, I, I, lately I've mentioned it a lot. I, I, this is just kind of a thing and I won't mention it all the time, but in any event, back to AA. Two months uh, into the program, I, I got a sponsor, and uh, really a spiritual guy. I mean, really, uh, uh, just a powerhouse, and uh, very fortunate. His name was Lyman. But anyway, um, Lyman says, well, okay, Mark, you've been to lots of meetings in the last two months, 30, 40 meetings. You're getting a lay of the land, uh, and that's a good thing. And you're, you're starting to recognize the various characters in our program. And what I want you to do is to intentionally sit next to the person you dislike the most. And I said to Lyman, man, that, that's going to disturb my serenity. you got to be kidding. And he says, just do it. Trust me. You will learn more about yourself from that person you don't care for than you will from anyone else. So I did it, and I did it, and I did it, and I found that it, it's really true. Uh, he gave me a pathway, he gave me a bridge to a new level of understanding, to not dismiss people out of hand, to actually grow closer and to begin to understand really where they're coming from. Now, now someday, I look forward to when I don't have, well, I'll still probably do this forever. We'll always have the Zoom. But I do look forward to the day when we can sit together and have coffee and, you know, donuts and do the things that we used to do. And, uh, and I want you to know that if I sit next to you, it doesn't mean I dislike you. Just for the record, I want to make sure you understand that. So finally, as we think about this issue and this challenge and this opportunity of forgiveness, I invite you to think about who is on your lemon list today. And after this service is over, 
I invite you to begin to pray for the peace that surpasses all understanding for the people that are on that list. And I am confident that if you do, you will be able to enjoy a refreshing glass of lemonade on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Amen.